I'd like to thank the AATS for giving me the opportunity to present my research here today. I have nothing to disclose. Under normal physiologic conditions, the heart balances between fatty acid and glucose to generate ATP, with around 50 to 70 percent of acetyl-CoA derived ATP generated from fatty acids. Now, during ischemia and reperfusion, overall oxidative metabolism is decreased, with a relative increase in reliance on fatty acid oxidation, and in the mitochondria, a decrease in glucose oxidation, in the cytoplasm, an increase in glycolysis, leading to an uncoupling of glycolysis and glucose oxidation. When this occurs, there's an accumulation of lactate and hydrogen ions, and this leads to an inefficient myocardium as ATP generated goes toward ionic homeostasis rather than toward contractile function. Now, although passive diffusion does contribute to fatty acid uptake in the cardiac myocyte, due to the heart's continuous you, a need for ATP, this is inadequate to maintain contractile function. Therefore, protein-mediated fatty acid transport is especially important in the cardiac myocyte. And CD36 has been shown to be responsible for 50% of fatty acid transport into the cardiac myocyte. Now, during times of ischemia reperfusion, there is an increase in circulating fatty acids with loss of subcellular control of fatty acid utilization. Fatty acid utilization is broken into three main steps, fatty acid uptake, triacylglycerols, so that's fatty acid storage, and fatty acid oxidation. And what we propose is that by ablating CD36, we will decrease fatty acid uptake and thus impart benefit to the reperfused myocardium. Therefore, our research hypothesis is that limiting fatty acid uptake will decrease fatty acid oxidation and subsequently improve post-ischemic myocardial function. Now, the way we went about addressing this research question is by generating an inducible cardiomyocyte-specific CD36 knockout mouse by utilizing the Cree-LOX technology. And what we can see in the characterization of this mouse is that CD36 present in the cardiac myocyte in the control mouse is not present in our knockout mouse. As well, when looking at other cell types, such as skeletal muscle, CD36 present in the control mouse is also present in our knockout mouse, conferring to us a model of cardiomyocyte-specific CD36 ablation. Therefore, now that we've had this CD36 ablation, what we expect, again, in those three parts of fatty acid utilization is a decrease in uptake, a decrease in storage, and a decrease in oxidation. And indeed, what we do see in this model is that looking at a graph of fatty acid uptake, we see that the CD36 knockout represented in the black bar has significantly less fatty acid uptake into the cardiac myocyte when compared to the control mouse. As well, when looking at fatty acid storage in the form of intramyocardial triacylglycerol content, we see that the CD36 knockout mouse model has significantly decreased tag when compared to the control mouse. And finally, when looking at fatty acid oxidation with ex vivo aerobically perfused mouse hearts, we see that fatty acid oxidation is as well significantly decreased in our knockout model when compared to the control. So now that we have a model of decreased fatty acid uptake and utilization, we then wanted to investigate whether this did impart a functional benefit during ischemia and reperfusion. And again, using our ex vivo working heart model, looking at a graph of heart rate, we'll just run through the protocol. It's 30 minutes of aerobic perfusions, followed by 18 minutes of global no-flow ischemia, followed by 40 minutes of reperfusion. And when we look at markers of myocardial performance in the reperfused myocardium, what we see is in the white boxes, which are our control mice, as expected, there's a significant decrease in the rate pressure product during times of reperfusion. And this is significantly improved in the black circles, which are our knockout mouse model. As well, looking at another marker of myocardial performance, cardiac power, we see a similar pattern. That is, the control mouse have significantly decreased cardiac power during times of reperfusion that is significantly improved in our knockout mouse model. So once we saw that this CD36 knockout mouse model confers functional benefit during reperfusion, we then started to wonder whether cardiac metabolism had anything to do with this, and we looked at myocardial efficiency. So again, under normal conditions, ATP generation and utilization is a balance between contractile function ionic homeostasis, and basal metabolism. But during ischemia and reperfusion, this balance is shifted as ATP generation goes more towards ionic homeostasis rather than towards contractile function. Therefore, when we looked at myocardial efficiency, 
here in a graph of ATP production over LV work. We see in, the, we see in a measurement of ATP production in glycolysis, in fatty acid oxidation, as well as glucose oxidation, that our CD36 knockout mouse model has significantly decreased ATP production per unit LV work when compared to the control mouse. That is, our knockout mouse uses far less ATP per unit work than the control mouse, thus showing its increased metabolic efficiency during times of reperfusion. So now that we have shown this mouse model in an ex vivo state, having an increase in myocardial function as well as efficiency during reperfusion, we wondered if this conferred benefit or translated to the in vivo ischemia reperfusion model. So the model we used was a model of LAD ligation and followed by reperfusion, 30 minutes of ischemia. And what we see is that the infarct caused in the control mouse in this LAD IR model is significantly decreased in our CD36 knockout mouse, as well represented here in this bar graph of infarct area over total LV area. As well, when we looked at ventricular sections via electron microscopy, we see that damage incurred during reperfusion to mitochondrial structure and integrity is markedly lessened in our CD36 knockout mouse model. Therefore, what we summarize from this study is this study is a model of short-term inducible cardiomyocyte-specific CD36 ablation, and this is a model of decreased fatty acid uptake, storage, and utilization. And this model shows or exhibits an improved functional recovery during ischemia, as well as improved myocardial efficiency in the reperfused myocardium. Therefore, taken together, pharmacotherapy designed to specifically inhibit cardiomyocyte CD36 may represent a promising new approach to lessen myocardial IR injury in patients. Thank you very much. Dr. Vivek Rao is the invited discussant. G. Van, that was uh, an excellently presented uh, study, and I want to commend you on the quality of your manuscript and the various supplemental files that you did submit with that. Uh, I have several questions for you. I'm going to ask them one at a time. The first question is, and you didn't really get into it in your presentation, but uh, your earlier studies from your group looked at a total body knockout CD36, and you actually found contradictory results, which led to your development of a cardiomyocyte-specific uh, and inducible knockout. Can you discuss why you may think that there's contradictory results? Yes. Uh, so what Dr. Rao is referring to is our lab has produced conflicting results with another lab in terms of a model of ischemia and reperfusion in the whole body CD36 knockout model. Now, there are multiple differences between our question, which is the cardiomyocyte specific role of CD36 and the whole body knockout model. The main one is circulating substrate utilization. In the whole body knockout model, there's a significant decrease in free fatty acids circulating in the plasma, whereas in our CD36 knockout model, there's no significant difference in circulating free fatty acids, insulin, or triacylglycerol. So I think the, the biggest thing is substrate, uh, substrate, circulating substrate utilization, but as well, the inherent issues of a whole body knockout model, which is that it's incurred during development and may cause chronic and developmental issues not only to the heart but to other organs in the body that can affect myocardial substrate utilization are also not seen in our inducible model, which is induced in the adult. Great. And along those lines, you did show some data looking at various um, substrate utilization, the glucose oxidation, the palmitate oxidation. In your manuscript, you also looked at various enzymes to make sure that your knockout mice didn't affect uh, enzymes and oxidative uh, phosphorization, such as acetyl-CoA transferase. You didn't measure uh, enzymes in glucose oxidation or uh, glycolysis, such as pyruvate dehydrogenase. Um, would you speculate to see whether they would be increased or decreased in your knockouts? Certainly. I think uh, one of the things that we can definitely say is due to the increase in coupling between glycolysis and glucose oxidation, we have a significant decrease in the, ATP, in the AMP ATP ratio in our cytoplasm of our CD36 knockout mice, which therefore causes a decrease in the activation of energy sensing kinases such as AMPK and decreases phosphorylation of pyruvate dehydrogenase at serine 293 which will then increase pyruvate, pyruvate dehydrogenase activity. So what I suspect in terms of 
inhibiting phosphorylation of pyruvate dehydrogenase, if I looked at the protein expression, is that would be significantly decreased in our CD36 knockout model when compared to the control mouse. Great. The next couple questions are more theoretical than related to your data specifically. Um, you showed us the effects of a CD36 knockout. Um, do you have any experience or uh, speculate what would happen if you had a CD36 overexpressing mouse? Yes, there's, a, there's been a few papers uh, that have slowly starting to come out uh, looking at the CD36 overexpressor, and these are all models of increased fatty acid utilization. So preliminary work on the CD36 overexpressing model that was presented at uh, the ISHR had shown that in a model of diabetes and obesity, which is a model of increased fatty acid uptake, when you further increase it with CD36 overexpression in the cardiac myocyte, you actually end up with a significant decrease in LV function over the course of an eight-week period of obese feeding phenotype. And furthermore, on that uh, topic, there are specific CD36 ligands available, one of which is EP80317. Um, have you looked at studies losing your knockout and see if there's a loss of effect of that CD36 ligand? Uh, in terms of that particular CD36 ligand, the, the interesting part of that uh, paper you're referring to, uh, published in circulation uh, or in cardiovascular research in 2012, was that they didn't actually show the circulating levels of free fatty acids in glucose. And I suspect, based on that study, that they have the same issues as the whole body knockout model, where the overall whole body effect of inhibiting CD36 causes changes in circulating substrate metabolism, which doesn't necessarily allow them to ask the specific question as to the cardiomyocyte-specific role of CD36, uh, which we were able to further answer. Thank you once again for a wonderful presentation and manuscript. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Are there any questions from the floor? Dr. Jessen. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit? Sorry. Can you elaborate a little bit more on uh, how you measured the efficiency? Did you measure oxygen consumption in these hearts, or how was that determined? We did not measure MVO2 in these hearts. Uh, in our ex vivo model, we, we don't cannulate the pulmonary artery. But what we do is we we calculate ATP production via our glycolysis rate, glucose oxidation rate, and fatty acid oxidation rate. And we then take that per unit of LV work that we also calculate as, a, as cardiac output multiplied by pressure difference. Because the, the difference you showed in efficiency was, was extreme. It was about, was about double between the two groups. But if we switch from pure carbohydrate sources to pure fatty acid sources, we typically only expect about a 15% difference. So how do you explain the, the greater amount that you observe in your study? I think the, the elegance of, of this model is twofold. One is to elaborate on previous work done by uh, Dr. Wu and Dr. Rao in terms of glycolysis and glucose oxidation coupling. This model causes an increase in glycolysis and glucose oxidation coupling just due to the fact that you have a decrease in fatty acid-derived acetyl-CoA, which, which causes via the well-described Randall cycle an upregulation in glucose oxidation. But as well, the elegance of this study is that you decrease fatty acid uptake, which decreases fatty acid intermediates, such as diacylglycerols and ceramides, which have been shown to be lipotoxic to the cardiac myocyte. As well, you decrease lipid reactive species, such as 4-hydroxy, 2-non-enol, and MDA, which I think all combined cause this improvement in myocardial efficiency. And how do the fatty acids get in in the, deficient, in the knockout model? So besides CD36, which is the primary uh, fatty acid transport protein in the cardiac myocyte, there are two other well-described fatty acid transport proteins. That is fatty acid transport protein 1, FATP1, and fatty acid binding protein, FABPM. Do those change in the model at all? Actually, they, we've done our protein experiment.